Mellon, Director of the Campus Center here at Bridgewater State, along with Shelly Keniston, the Associate Director of Residence Life and Housing. Today we're here to talk about demystifying the SSF Innovation Grant at Bridgewater State. We know some of you have been interested in learning more about the grant and how to get the money, so hopefully uh, this module will help you uh, learn more and help you inspire you to take action to apply for some of this money. Today what you're going to learn about is what exactly the SSF Innovation Grant is in Student Affairs, who can apply for this grant, how to put together a very strong proposal, uh, how to develop your assessment, which I know some of you are stressed out about a little bit, like how do I do this, but don't worry, we got you covered, and where online specifically do I apply. So with all, with all that in front of us, let's get going. So what is the Student Support Fee Innovation Grant in Student Affairs? So aside from what you can read there on the screen, um, part of it, what it really means is this is for people who have great new ideas um, that you hadn't planned for in your budget, there's one-time initiatives, etc. And we want to help you bring the students, those programs, um, and those services, and new ideas and initiatives, uh, even though you hadn't necessarily planned for them. So, in essence, we have, they have to be innovative, uh, in other words, new, uh, something that hasn't been done before. Um, and really, this, um, this idea of progressive change in the campus community is big. And so, some of you have had some really good ideas, but just not, haven't had the money to do them. So, we hope that this now enables you to apply and get these ideas pushed forward. The folks who can apply for this grant is really anyone in the Division of Student Affairs. You really should go through, um, you know, director or assist, assistant director. But anyone can can apply, um, and you know, we'll talk about the steps in a second. But as long as you're in student affairs, you certainly can apply for this grant money. So we want to just kind of go over the steps for putting together a strong student service fee, student support fee proposal. Uh, so prior to starting the process, the one thing that we really want to emphasize is that you need to read through the entire grant application first. Um, the grant, the proposal itself is not set up in such a way that you can work on it and save your work and go back to it later. So it really is important to go through it all, figure out what's going to be required of you, and be able to work on that before you go in and really start to enter it. So gather feedback from your staff members, your area director, or your AVP. Think about how you will assess your program. And so Ed said previously that there is help here. That's a part that a lot of people kind of shy away from and get hung up on. But at the bottom of the page that you can see, it does list um, that the Student Affairs Assessment Committee is here to help you. So Beth is the chair. And then the members can also be found on the Student Affairs Assessment um, Committee website. And then we encourage you to review the scoring rubric that the committee will use uh, when looking over your proposal to decide if it will be funded. The link is there, but we'll also highlight it for you a little bit later. So there are projects that aren't eligible for funding, and I want to go through um, these with you real quick. Um, first of all, the, the programs have to be intended for students, and that's the program or service has to be really focused for them, and so make sure that um, it's not just for a staff development or anything like that, but it has to really be for students. Um, it it can already be part of your operating budget, so certainly this again is a new project and something that um, isn't already in the operating budget for this fiscal year, unless the project really looks at something that's unique to that specific program that's already funded. Um, no fundraising of any kind is allowed. Um, also, it's important to consider that you can't use the money to pay BSU staff for like presenting or doing some some level of service for for the students. Um, something to be considered also is about salaries. Um, although there are some can be some exceptions made for student employment if there's a need for that. Um, they have to have clearly articulated learning outcomes and assessment plans incorporated. So those two things are really key to your proposal. So make sure that you've articulated those really well before you move forward. Um, obviously, they, it can't, um, you know, the expenses can't violate federal, state, local, or Bridgewater state law. Um, and finally, these last two are big. Um, it has to be, with, you know, um, from a group that within the last calendar year um, received funding but failed to turn in their post, um, you know, so you can't, you have to have some level of assessment. This, this speaks again to the assessment piece. Um, and then finally, it has to be within um, a student affairs department or unit. So 
That covers it, right, Joe? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen, as we take you through the information we have in the actual PowerPoint slides, um, Ed is going to be typing in as we go so that we can highlight each section for you and talk about what goes in it. So the first is the is just basically the principal investigator information. So he's going to enter the name, Charlie Brown. Uh, we're going to put the department as a center for multicultural affairs. The area director will be Cynthia White. Campus address, um, 555 Campus Center, extension 9876. So in this example, we'll add the full number because that's what is asked of us. Yes, so you have to put in the 508531. Yeah. And then for an email address, uh, we'll put in cbrown at awesome.bridgew.edu. I think so we should rename a server awesome. <laughs> yeah. <an> idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously we're using a fictitious example with, you know, fictitious names and just to kind of walk you through to be able to see um, some of the simpler stuff. So. Along the way, you're going to see some yellow boxes that pop up as you are entering information into the actual proposal. And these are there to just kind of give you some tips or explain further detail what uh, is being asked in that section. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about the application type. So this is where you want to check off what kind of proposal it is. So this is a new proposal and we're going to do a one-time, uh, new one-time program. That's what we're asking for. So in the project details, uh, we're going to talk about the name, which for us, we're doing exploring the Great Pumpkin Patch. It is October after all. Of course. In the summary abstract, so it will pop up. You see the yellow box. It's telling you that this is a brief overview. Uh, but that later on they're going to be asking for much more detail. Yeah, so here it's okay to be a little bit more general, broad. Again, an abstract should be, you know, I don't know, 150 to 200 words. Nothing too crazy, just to get just to get the reader interested in what you're trying to accomplish. Also, I'll just note here, this is why we, we recommended when, um, in filling out the grant to review all of the sections ahead of time. But then also to do what you just saw Ed do, where you have the um, where you have the paragraph that you're going to enter typed somewhere else, because this other box won't do spell check. So you want to be able to run that um, either from a Word document and type the information. It also keep a word count for you, so that's just something else that's helpful to do. Uh, under the minimum eligibility requirements. This is where you'll see the scoring rubric that we reference that you should take a look at. Um, yeah, and then if you were to click, yeah, if you were to yeah. click it, you, you would see it would show up. And certainly, uh, I can expand this window a little bit, but you can see here this is the rubric that, as we mentioned before, you're, you're going to want to see more of. Um, and this is what the committee will use to score your grant proposal. So um, it's a good idea just to, just to go through it, print it out, and then check it out yourself. But for the purposes of the training, I just want to make sure that you, you knew exactly where that was. It is within the grant application itself. So the next section talks about the innovative and change piece. This is where you just want to put in um, how the project is innovative or how it will promote positive change within the community. And so you can see what we listed there um, a little bit, just saying like this is how it's innovative. Um, the next section is about undergraduate student engagement. So there's a couple of questions under this section. So in the first, we it's explain how your project provides a direct benefit to undergraduate students. And again, you can see the mustardy yellow color box pop up to kind of give you a tip. So those are things that you want to be looking at and checking out. And the next box um, really talks about how this project fosters engagement in student learning outside the classroom. Um, and once again, I'll just point out the little mustardy box. So make sure that you're reading these as you go and um, you have the information that they're looking for. But this, just to give you a sense, um, when Ed and I worked on this, we did come up with this example. Um, and it was about a half hour as we kind of just typed through some things. 
Yeah, and I mean, again, yeah, you're you're gonna want more than what we've what we're putting in. Obviously, um, it's just to get you thinking about you know how you would present your your project proposal um, content. So. The next section um, had to do with the mission-related needs. So this section. Oh, there it is. I was like, oh, I thought we had it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so this section um, is attaches to what the mission of the department is and how does it tie together. Mm -hmm. Learning goals and outcomes are next, and certainly we're all familiar with what these are. And so I would make sure that you <coughs> take a look at. Um, you know your what exactly your learning goals are and then um, you know it does break it up into strategic goals so um, there's a link we added here <clears throat> to look at not just the student affairs goals but also the um, uh, the uh, university's goals as well so we'll just cut and paste those in here Uh, and then specific student learning outcomes are here. Uh, oh yeah, right here. Okay. So again, the we can't stress enough how important it is to do all this work outside of the actual grant application, and then cut and paste in, and it'll save you a ton of time um, down the road. Uh, eventually, you'll get down here to where it says project details and budget, and this is where all the new gritty information is put in. Um, we didn't do a full description of the project. I just noticed that, which I apologize for. But I think the reason is because you can attach a Word document here. As you can see right down here, it says you can attach a Word document that fully describes the project. And that is really where your abstract goes a little further. And certainly you can take pieces from what you've already inserted in and kind of, you know, kind of tie it all together. This is the full description of the project as you see fit um, here. I won't attach it right now. but. Um, you, know, you also want to look at your total um, budget amount. So for us, you know, five hundred dollars is what we're looking for, primarily for transportation. Um, you know, we don't have a, we don't have, you know, we're not going to have food. Um, this is one, t this is one-time materials. Um, no reusable. I think advertising costs. We we just use social media and make it free. <laughs> These are transportation costs. Um, no rental of equipment, no student employee costs, nothing. Okay. Now, certainly, if you wanted to put a, it, yes, this the Great Pumpkin Patch program is a multi-year request. You could, for our for our purposes, we're going to say no. We're just going to say one time. Um, and then, if you had to make it multi-year, you'd have to increase funding. Um, certainly, I would do that if I was doing a multi-year because you want to add in the cost increased costs over the over the years. Um, and certainly, you can attach an Excel spreadsheet as well. So that's an option as well. Um, and then the assessment, this is how you would describe the assessment piece. So, you know, what we described is a quick five question Qualtrics survey that the students can take, you know, on their smart devices or, or on paper, depending on how they wanted to take it. Um, and then you can attach that as well as a plan. Uh, again, this is, this, this application is great because it does allow you to attach files to it that you've done offsite. So, um, so that's how you do it, and then you would verify by checking, typing your name, and hitting submit, and that would go to the committee for review. Um, you know, at this point, the things to focus on um, is that this is the link there. We've shortened it because the Wufu link is actually pretty long, and so we created a Bitly link. It's BSU SSF 2013, so it should be fairly simple to remember. Um, and again, just make sure that you use Microsoft Word if you're typing up things for spelling, grammar, and all that other, uh, you know, all those other great things to think about as you're writing up the grant proposal. And uh, so, when are these due? There are multiple deadlines throughout the school year. The next one for us is going to be November first, two thousand thirteen. And then just in summary, we want you to know the members of the Student Affairs Assessment Committee are available to help in any piece of this process. Everyone's name that are part of the committee, help in this. Um, so don't wait. Schedule time now. All of our names, is, more information about the Student Affairs Assessment Committee is available um, off the website. Contact any one of us. Uh, and then there's... 
approximately $20,000 available for everyone. So submit your requests today. Um, we'll be updating that as we have had some successful grants and we have used some of that money. But at this point, um, we want you to be taking home some of that and helping our students. We appreciate your time today. I hope this has answered most of your questions. Feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any further questions. We hope to see all your innovation grant applications soon. Until until next time, thanks so much. See you have, later. Have a great day.